congratulations, you have now been allocated to check your first aid kit. Let's have a look what would normally be in a first aid box. Most important thing that you need to look for in the first instance is your content list. And that's the best way to go through and check exactly what's in the kit. But look, what we'll do is we'll go through some of the items and so that you at least identify what you have in a kit. Always looking for your first aid booklet and it gives you advice on CPR as well. An emergency blanket, we won't open that one up, but it ends up as a great big silver blanket and people, if they're in shock, that's what you need to use. Saline is very important, usually to wash out the eye, but you also use it to wash out the wound and you just tear off that little bit at the top. Alco wipes are used to clean around the wound and it's to wipe the skin. The skin holds lots of infections, so you need a little alco wipe to wipe around the skin before you put your dressing on it. Now, antiseptic, if you need some larger quantity of antiseptic, it's usually found in these little yellow vials. Make sure that that never goes into the eyes. And again, it's like the saline where you rip the top and you then pour over the wound. Notebook and pen, just to make sure that if you've got an injury that you do record what happened and what time it happened. Paper tape, this one is great because it's hyperallergenic and if any, it won't affect anybody's skin. And it holds the bandages on, holds the dressings on. As do the safety pins, they hold the bandages in place. And scissors, we know what they're for, but they're to, just in case, it's to cut dressings and to cut bandages. And your splinter forceps. A CPR card, separate. You can just go th through that quickly, which makes sure that you know what to do in an emergency. And these ones are splinter probes, if you need to dig something out, it's got a little tiny end on it, it's a little pick. And finally on our top shelf of our first aid kit is our burn aid sachets. Now burn aid is used if you've got a minor burn and these little sachets carry about three mil of the burn aid gel. And you just rip it open and you put it on and it's a nice thick water-based lotion. It is not a cream and it is specifically designed for burns. Make sure you put it on nice and thick when you do as well. On the bottom layer of our first aid kit, we have some gauze. And that's just a clean wound, so you would use that with the liquid antiseptic. Days of cotton wool has gone, and this is what you're looking for in your first aid kit is your packet balls. So these ones are antiseptic wipes, a little bit different than the Alco wipes. These are actually meant to wipe the wound. And if you've got a small wound, this is probably all that you'll need to use. It's a little bit larger squab, and it does have, it's impregnated with antiseptic. It may be called a skin prep or a wound prep or a wound wipe. Eye pads, you'll find a few of those in the kit. And if you've got an eye injury, then you, the most important thing is to cover up the eye that's injured. That way it won't move around. Any of your sharps, if you, your splinter probes, or if you're in an environment where there are some needles, they go into this disposal kit. Most important thing when you first start doing any dressings is to put on your gloves. These ones are nitrile gloves, so that means that anyone has, who has an allergy to latex can use those gloves. Of course, these ones, band-aids, I'm sure we know what they're for and how to use those. That's an awfully big box, but usually in the office that's what you're going through. 
And this particular kit does come with a bag of tissues as well. And plenty of bandages. There are bandages of different sizes and different types. These, these ones here are conforming. They're a nice light bandage. You have also got some crepe bandage in, in there. A little bit heavier and holds dressings in place. And there is a heavy crepe bandage. They're usually the brown ones and they're also in the kit. And that is for a compression and also a, a for sprains and strains. Oh, snake bites, we'll come across that one in a moment. This is a non-adherent dressing. If you're wondering what to put on something larger, you would use this non-adherent. It's got a shiny side, and that's the side that you put down onto the skin. And then you would put a bandage over the top of it, probably using antiseptic before you put that on. Wound dressing. A lot of kits have these wound dressings in them, and people aren't sure exactly what they're used for. Very much like the old field dressings, but they're very, very handy if you do have something serious happen. And it's just a matter of opening it. It comes, it has its own padding and its own bandaged attached. So they are really handy dressing, but they usually tend to sit in kits because people are unaware of how to use them and what they're for. Importantly, with any of the items that you're checking in your first aid kit, that they are sterile, they are in date, and they do look clean. If you've, even if a dressing is in date still, but you can see the outside packaging doesn't look that clean, then please make sure that you change it. Instant ice pack, this is for sprains and strains. And it is activated by a pressure hit. Then you would just give it one big whack. And trust me, although we, you can't feel this on the video, that goes very cold very quickly and you'll keep it on the injury for about 20 minutes. Resuscitation mask, extremely important in a first aid kit. This one is a full CPR mask, which means that it's going to seal the face very well. It also has a filter, which means that you're not going to have anything regurgitated back if your casualty starts to regurgitate. And the kits also come with a small little thing called a galley pot. It does have a measure on it. If you do need to use it for fluids and to rehydrate somebody or any form of liquids in that. And your kidney bowl, as you can see there as well, it holds all of the dressings and the empty wrappings and your antiseptic. Triangular bandages. Anyone that's done a first aid course is familiar with your good old triangular bandage. It's a disposable one. And the heavy crepe bandages, as I mentioned earlier. If you've got a strain or sprain, or even for a snake bite, this is the best way to go, is using the heavy crepe bandage. A burn aid pad. Now this is absolutely vital if you've got a burn that's larger than that, the small amount that we showed you before with the sachets. This is a foam pad that's impregnated with a, a, a gel, water suspended in a gel. This is used by ambulances all around the world and it is incredible. If you've got a burn, it will, it acts as an antiseptic and an antiseptic. So it, helps relieve the pain and it also helps reduce infection while it's cooling the burn. So if you haven't got the opportunity for 20 minutes of running water, then this is the way to go with your burn aid dressing. And this is a, just a larger non-adherent dressing. I think we've just about covered everything that's in your first aid kit. Our plastic bags. Now these are meant for amputation bags, but let's hope we never have to go there. They just to put you know, rubbish on and dispose of anything that's been used and bloody and, and uh, needs to be disposed of properly. So that is a general workplace kit, first aid kit. This kit actually meets the Australian standards for Safe Work Australia, and it'll be the common items that you would find in your first aid kit. So happy checking, and hopefully that you find it much easier now that you know what items do what and what they look like.